In order to understand how three-phase power supplies work, like the type used in variable frequency drives and high-powered inverters, it's very important to understand the rectification process. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to basics and have a look at single-phase rectifiers. Now, the first thing that you have to tell yourself when you're working with single-phase rectifiers is the voltage at the input terminals is always changing polarity. It's AC voltage, but it changes 60 times a second. So what I'm going to do before I analyze this circuit is I am going to display two waveforms on this oscilloscope after I attach it to this low voltage transformer. The transformer is supplied by 120 volts RMS through a step down uh, ratio. I think it's around 6.5 to 1. Something like that. And we're going to have a look at that voltage. It's around 18 volts AC RMS. Now, this is a two channel scope and each one of the channels has a positive lead and a negative lead. So just remember that. So what I'll do is I'll take channel A and I'll connect it to the positive lead to X1, the negative lead, or it would be the black lead on your meter to X2. And you can see we have a nice, beautiful waveform. Now it's 18 volts RMS. The peak is going to be well above 20 volts. Now what I will do is I will take channel B, but instead of connecting it the same polarity, I am going to connect it opposite. And for effect, so that we can see the two waveforms, I will change the color of the lead on B and it'll show up as a different trace. So now I'll go ahead and run this simulation again and let's have a look. Now you can clearly see that the polarity changes with respect to the two leads on the transformer. If this one is positive, so if this one's, let's say, pushing, this one's pulling. Now on X1, if it's negative, X2 will be positive. So there's a push-pull going on between the two leads. So when we have a look at the rectifiers and you want to analyze how the diodes work in the front end, please keep that in mind. In order to explain single phase full wave rectification, I have two circuits drawing out. Now the circuits operate identical to each other with the exception of a couple of things. Now just let me explain those. The circuit on the top is constructed using four single diodes. So we've taken four diodes and tied them together. The circuit on the bottom uses a package of diodes uh, that can be purchased all in one unit. It has four connections on it and you can bolt it onto a surface and supply it with AC and it will provide a DC output. Now the circuit on the bottom, we also have a bank of capacitors connected to show how filtering works. So let's have a look at the power flow on the circuit. And I'll start with the, I'll start with the circuit on the top because it's, it's a little bit more simpler without the capacitors. Now we know how the AC voltage alternates. So let's just go back to what we were covering earlier. If we have a positive alternation here with respect to this point. This diode will turn on. A diode is a one-way electrical valve or an electrical, electrically controlled one-way valve and it has an anode lead and a cathode lead and when the anode lead is more positive with respect to the cathode it allows current to flow. It takes about 0.7 to 1 volt for a power diode to turn on. So if this is positive, current will flow through the anode, through that cathode lead onto the bus. It will pass through the bus, through the load. It'll return to the AC supply through 
this diode, which is attached to the opposite conductor on the transformer. Okay, now we have to analyze it when the polarity is flipped. So now, this leg or this conductor on the transformer is negative and this one is positive. So now, this anode is more positive than the cathode. So now we have current flow through this diode. Can't go that way because that diode is going to block. It's going to head out to the load. It's going to travel through the load. Come back. It can't, it can't conduct through that diode because it's positive, so it's blocking. It will cathode up to that leg right there. So it's they it works opposite. So you have two diodes that work together. This diode and this diode. They work as a pair. And this diode and this diode work as a pair. Okay, so let's have a look at the uh, full wave bridge package. It's going to work exactly the same. So if this lead coming from the transformer is positive with respect to this one at any given time, this diode will be conducting because this lead is more positive than this lead. The anode is more positive than the cathode. Current flows through this choke coil. I'll explain that through the load all the way back to the source. Now it can't travel through this diode because this diode is blocking because the cathode lead is positive. So the current flows through this diode back to the source. Now what we'll do is we'll flip it. Now this lead is positive and this one is negative from the AC supply. So which diode turns on? This one turns on. Current flows through, through the load, and back to the supply. Which diode carries it back to the transformer? This one. So it flows through that diode back to the transformer. Now we're going to look at the output waveforms and I will explain the choke and capacitors. So let's have a look at the circuit on the top that does not have the capacitors connected. It is outputting what is called ripple volts DC. And you'll notice that the, uh, the voltage it rises and it drops all the way down to the zero line. So each half of the AC alternation is pushing current through the load and you will notice how it drops all the way back, okay? So that circuit does not have any capacitors connected. The circuit on the bottom, let's have a look at it. It has capacitors connected. So what it does, when you connect the capacitors in parallel with the DC, let's call it the DC bus, because that's what we call it on drives, you get a nice, smooth, straight line. And the average voltage is quite a bit higher, and I will show you that. Okay, so if you have damaged capacitors, you are going to have ripple voltage output and the average voltage will be a lot less. Now, before I show you the what the voltage differences are, let me explain what the choke does. So when you first energize this circuit, this bank of capacitors appears to be a short circuit because they do not have any voltage across them. There's no current stored in them. So what will happen is, when you first energize it, current will try to rush through the bridge, okay, and fill up the capacitors, and it may actually damage the bridge. So it actually limits the inrush current to the capacitors in the DC bus. But the choke also filters out current pulses. So if you have a short circuit or a sudden load change, it will limit the current to the load it will even limit uh, current to a short circuit. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll take a voltmeter and I'm going to put it on the output of the circuit on top, the full wave bridge on top. 
that does not have a capacitor bank installed. I'll set this to volts DC and I'll go ahead and run it. And you, you have 15.18 volts, we'll say, just over 15 volts. I'll stop it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this capacitor bank. And let's connect that on the circuit on the top. Let's see what happens to our voltage. So we'll do, let's do two things. We'll have a look at the oscilloscope and the voltage. So remember, 15.2 volts, we'll call it. Uh, the oscilloscope now, watch what happens to the oscilloscope now that we had the capacitors connected. Nice, straight DC. So a nice, hard, steady push on the DC. And on a variable frequency drive, we supply that voltage to the DC bus. Now let's have a look at our average DC voltage. So DC volts, 24 point four one or sorry twenty four point four volts we'll call it so just over twenty four volts so our voltage increased from fifteen volts to twenty four when we connected the capacitor bank across the DC bus okay so uh, hopefully that helps in uh, analyzing how rectifiers work just remember on a full wave bridge Two diodes are always working together. So if you were to lose one diode, you lose a pair. You lose half your DC output. There is another type of single phase AC rectifier that only uses two diodes, but you need to use a split phase transformer. And the reason that I chose this rectifier for demonstration is it resembles the rectifier in the front end of a variable frequency drive. And we are going to have a look at that now.